to Goodburn, Hamburg to Naples. Racing Roland gets here at 11.27. Venice, Stockholm. Our last remaining pleasure, watching trains go by. Five years ago, the Goodrun and the Racing Roland stopped in Goodrun. And the Diplomat and the Lorelei, all famous express trains. World famous. No, not even the commuting trains stopped. Just two from Caffigan and the 113 from Calvish. No wind. Bargain and Factory gone crash. Bogman bankrupt. Sandra on Sunshine Square shut down. Living on the dole. On poor relief soup. Living. Vegetating. And rotting to death. The entire township. It's more than time that millionaire has got here. They say she founded a hospital in Calverstadt. And a kindergarten in Caffigan. And a memorial church in the capital. She had Zimit do a portrait of that naturalistic dauber. For her and her money, she owns Armenian Oil, the Northern Broadcasting Company, Western Railway, and the Hong Kong Amusement District. The Diplomat. We were a city of the arts then. One of the foremost in the land. Is Europe. Goethe spent a night here, in the Golden Apostle. Brahms composed a quartet here. Bertolt Schwartz invented gunpowder here. And I was a brilliant student at the Ecole de Beaux Arts. And what am I doing here now? Sign painting. The Kafkan commuter. The bailiff coming to distrain on the town hall. We're even ruined politically. Yes, Laura, we're arriving on the front 13 commuter from Calcutta. We'll have a big squire and the youth club. It's my bell ringing. It hasn't been formed yet. Well, the town band playing on Market Square. Um, the athletics club on one of the millionaires, the pyramid. Then a meal with a golden apostle. Finances, unfortunately, can't be stretched to eliminate the cathedral for the evening. Or the town hall. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Very good morning to you. Right, Mr. Glutz, what are you doing here? You know my mission, Mr. Mayor? It's a colossal thing to strain on the entire town. You won't find a thing in the town hall, that part of my old typewriter. I think you're forgetting something, Mr. Mayor. The Gullen History Museum. Gone three years ago. Sold to America. Our coffers are empty. Not a single soul pays taxes. You'll have to be investigated. The country's booming. And Gullen has a sunshine foundry, yet Gullen goes bankrupt. We're up against a real economic enigma. The whole thing's a Freemason's plot. Conspired by the Jews. Backed by high finance. International communism showing its colours. Mm. I always find something. I put eyes like a hawk. I think I'll take a look at the treasury. Don't let him plunder us first. Not after the millionaires, is it, eh? You know, Mr. Mayor, this banner won't do. It's too familiar. It ought to say, welcome, Claire Zapanassian. Oh, she's Clary. Clary Basher. She was educated here. Her dad was the builder. OK, so I'll write, welcome, Claire Zapanassian, on the back. And if the millionaire seems to touch, we'll turn it round and show her the front. It's the speculator, Zori Hamburg. Always on time. You can set your watch by it. Tell me who still owns a watch in this place. Well, oh, gentlemen, the Tilly Harris is our only home. Apart from Marge, yes, apart from Dolph. Okay. He used to be a friend of hers, Ill. So now, it all depends on you. Ah, uh, but the way's parted. I had some story about it. Have you no confession to make to your priest? We were the best of friends, young and hot-headed. I used to be a bit of a lad, gentlemen, 45 years ago. She, Clara. I can see her still, coming towards me through the shadows in Peterson's barn, all aglow. Or walking barefoot in Comrade's village wood over the moss and leaves, with her red hair streaming out. Slim and supple as a widow. And tender. <laughs> what a devilish beautiful little witch. Life tore us apart. Life is the way it is. 
I'll give a few details about my own second classroom for my little afternoon of speech at Gordon Apostle. Uh, I've uh, been going through the old school reports, Mr. Mayor, and uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, Claire Vash's marks were appalling, <laughs> as was her conduct. She'll be passed in uh, botany and zoology. A pass? Botany and zoology? That's good. Uh, I can help you here, Mr. Mayor. Clara loved justice, most decidedly. Once, when they took a beggar away, she flung stones at the police. Double justice? Not bad. It always works. She was generous, I too. I believe that bit about the police. Though. She was generous, too. Everything she had, she shared. She stopped potatoes once for an old widow woman. Sense of generosity. Gentlemen, I actually must bring that in. It's the crucial point. Did anyone here remember building a father bill? That would sound good in my speech. No. No, no one. one. I'm fully prepared for my part. The rest. Well, I know, Zakanassian has to cough up her millions. <laughs> millions? That's the idea, precisely. When her says she only found a nursery. Mm -hmm. Dear Earl, you've been the most popular personality in Groenland for a long while now. In the spring, I shall be retiring. I've sounded out the opposition, and we've agreed to nominate you as my successor. Ah, Mr. Mayor, I can confirm that. Gentlemen. Back to business. First of all, I'll tell Clara all about our wretched plight. But do be careful. Do be tactful. We've got to be clever, psychologically acute. If we make a fiasco of the welcome at the station, we could easily wreck everything else. You know, I'm bringing off by relying on the municipal band and the mixed choir. Ill's right there. It'll be one of the decisive moments. Madame Sakanashian sets foot on a native soil, and she's home again. And how rude she is. There are tears in her eyes. Ah, oh, the old familiar places, the old faces. I'll be standing here like this in my shirt sleeves. I'll be in my formal black and a top hat. My God, if all of a sudden it goes according to plan. It's the Racing Revenant. Fede Stockholm, 11.27. 11.27? We've nearly two hours to get suitably dressed. Kern and Heuser, hoist the welcome player back in Asim Van. Uh, you others better wave your hats. But please, no bawling might last you at the government mission. It hardly impressed them at all. And so far, we've received no subsidy. This is no time for wild enthusiasm. The mood you want is a sombre, almost tearful sympathy for, a, for one of our children who has been lost and is found again. Be relaxed, sincere, but above all, time it well. The instant the class stops singing, sound the church bell. Madam, 
no such crime exists. Then found one. <laughs> Madam is Madam Claire Zakanassian. Do excuse me, of course it's different in that case. We'd have been only too happy to stop in Goulin if we'd had the faintest notion. So here's your money back, madam. Forty thousand! My goodness! Keep it. It's nothing. Keep your Does madam require the racing room to wait while she visits Goulin? I know the railway management would be only too glad. They say the cathedral portals are well worth a look. Gothic with the last judgment? Will you and your express train get the hell out of here? But Poppy, the press is still on the train. They're dining up front in the saloon. Let them die, Moby. Let them die. I can't use the press in Google yet. Clear. They'll come back later on. I do trust you won't complain to the railway management, madam. It was a pure misunderstanding. By the, the mixed choir. Fire away, schoolmaster. Let's hear your homely folk song. Bombay, at the left, 
with the big Adam's apple. He was really most singular. <laughs> Please, Inspector Hackman. At your service. Thank you. I shan't be wanting to arrest anybody. But Gulen may need you soon. Can you wink a blind eye to things from time to time? Where would I be going if I couldn't? Start learning to wink them both. Ha! Just like Clara, just like my little wild cat. Uh, a priest, that. Ah, the priest. Do you comfort the dying? I do what I can. People who've been condemned to death as well. Madam, the death penalty has been abolished in this country. It may be reintroduced. <laughs> really, you're the wild cat. You crack the wildest jokes. Now I want to go into town. <laughs> What's all this, Mr. Mayor? I don't go hiking miles on my artificial leg. Uh, immediately, madam. Um, the doctor rented a car. Uh, it's a Mercedes, 1932 model. I'll see to it, Mr. Mayor. I'll come in here and driven the right round. That won't be necessary. <clears throat> Since my accident, I only go about in sedan chairs. Roby, Toby, Doby. Bring it here. <laughs> Three gangsters from Manhattan. They were on their way to Sing Sing to the electric chair. I petitioned for them to be freed for sedan bearers. It cost me a million per petition. Roby, Toby, Doby, take me to town. Yes, yeah. But first of all, to the Peterson's barn, and then to Conrad's village wood. I want to take Alfred to visit our old trysting place. In the meanwhile, have the luggage in the coffin put in the golden apostle. Coffin? <laughs> yes, I brought a coffin with me. I may need it. Ask the church bell. Nassie, he's staying in the Golden Apostle. We're blind. We're blind. Sorry, no. Well, I'll take you there. Avenging Greek goddess. My name shouldn't be 
crouch, clover. I could suspect her of spinning destiny's webs myself. Uh, pull up a chair, Inspector. Not much fun patrolling this dump. Maybe now we're going to the ashes. I went with that skinny heiress in that shopkeeper room today, to Peterson's barn. Oh, it is quite a moving scene. Both maintained a military port. That's in the show. Oh, I was embarrassed. Therefore, I did not follow them to Comrades Village Wood. So, that was a real procession. <coughs> Sedan chair first. Ill walking beside it, the butler, and then a seven dozen the lads of this fishing world. That conspicuous consumption of husbands. She's a second legs. And then two funny little fat men. Nobody knows what it all means. Sinister. Like an ascent from the infernal regions. Oh, I wonder what they're after in comrades for this wood. <laughs> Same as if it's the bar on this thing. They were visiting the places where the passions used to burn, as they say. Flame. Flame. Remember Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. Gentlemen, I'm stirred. I sense the grandeur of antiquity in Gullen. I've never sensed it yet before. T Gentlemen, we must drink a special toast. To ill. A man who's doing all a man can to better our lot. To Marlborough's popular citizen, to my successor. We are trees, pine <laughs> <laughs> and spruce. We are beech and dark green fir. Lichen, moss and creeping ivy. Undergrowth and layer of box. Drift of cloud and call of bird. We are the woodland wilderness. Toadstool and the timid deer. And rustling leaves and bygone dreams. It's the Conrad's village wood. Stop, Nona. Stop, Teddy and Moby. Stop, Bowie and Moby. There's the heart with our two names on it, Alfred. Almost faded away and grown apart. And the trees grown. The trunk and branches have thickened the way we have ourselves. A woodland bower. It's a long time since I last walked through these woods in my young days, frolicking in the foliage just in the purple ivy. You brutes just go and chew your gum behind the bushes and take your sedan chair with you. I don't want to look at your mugs all the time. And Moby, stroll away over to that stream on the right there and look at the fish. Look, a doe. We kissed each other on this spot more than 50 years ago. We loved each other. Under these boughs, under these bushes, amongst these toadstools on the moss. I was 17 and you weren't quite 20. Then you married Matilda Bloomhart with her little general store. And I. Married old Zacanassian with his millions from Armenia. It was my red hair that took his fancy. The old gold lecher. Clara. <laughs> Bobby, a Henry Clay. A Henry Clay! A Henry Clay! I'm fond of cigars. I suppose I ought to smoke my husband's roaches. But I don't trust them. It was for your sake that I married Matilda Bloomhart. She had money. You were young and beautiful. The future belonged to you. I wanted you to be happy, so I had to renounce being happy myself. And now the future's here. If you'd stayed here, you'd be ruined like me. Are you ruined? Broken down shopkeeper in a broken down town. Now it's me who has money. I've been living in hell since you went away from me. And I've grown into hell itself. Always round with my family. They blame me for being poor. Didn't little Matilda make you happy? Your happiness is what matters. You're 
your children? They're not seen to my ideals. They'll develop <coughs> one soon. I think he's a laughable life. Never once really managed to leave this township. One trip to Berlin and one to Tessin. That's all. Why bother anyway? I know what the world's like. Because you've always been able to travel. <laughs> because I own it. Everything's going to be different now. Sure. Oh, are you going to help us? I shan't leave my hometown in the lurch. We need millions. That's nothing. <coughs> oh, little one. Strangling? Oh, strangling? 
<laughs> now, just bend your arms back again, Mr. Gymnast, then forward into a presser. Clara has such a golden sense of humour. I could die laughing at one of her jokes. Oh, I wonder. They chill me to the marrow. She's promised us hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions? Hundreds of millions. God almighty! And now, Mr. Mayor, I'm hungry. Uh, we were just waiting for your husband, my dear lady. You needn't. He's fishing. And I'm getting a divorce. A divorce? <laughs> Maybe you'll be surprised too. I'm marrying a film star. And you said you had a very happy marriage. Oh, my marriages were happy. But when I was a child, I used to dream of a wedding in Thule Cathedral. You should always fulfill your childhood dreams. It'll be a grand ceremony. My dear lady, fellow Gunners, 45 years have flowed by since you left our little town. Our town founded by Crown Prince Hasso the Noble. Our town so pleasantly nestling between Conrad's Village Wood and Pukenwood Valley. 45 years, more than four decades. It's a long time. Many things have happened since then. Many bitter things. It has gone sadly with the world. Gone sadly with us. And yet we have never, my dear lady, our clever really. <laughs> never forgotten. Neither you nor your family. Your mother, that magnificent and robustly healthy creature, tragically and prematurely torn from our midst by tuberculosis, and your father, that popular who built the building by the station, which experts and laymen still visit so often, still admire so much, they are in our thoughts, for they were of our best, our worthiest. And you too, madam, as you gamble through our streets, you, a curly-headed, long, red-headed madcap, who did not know you. Even then, people could sense the magic in your personality, and foresee your approaching rise to humanity's dizzy heights. You were never forgotten, literally never. Even now, <coughs> the staff in school hold up your achievements as an example to others. And in nature studies, the most essential ones, they were astonishing. A revelation of your sympathy for every living creature, indeed, all things in need of protection. And even then, people far and wide were moved to wonder at your love of justice and your sense of generosity. <laughs> or did not artillery buy potatoes with pocket money so hardly earned and uh, thereby save an old woman from dying of hunger to mention but one of her deeds of charity? <laughs> dear lady, dear lady, fellow citizens, that happy temperament has developed from those tender seeds to an impressive flower. And our red-headed madcap has become a lady whose generosity stirs the world. One need only think of her social work, of her soup kitchens and her maternity homes, of her art foundations and her children's nurseries. And now, therefore, I ask you to give three cheers for the prodigal return. Hip hip! Hurrah! Hip hip! Hurrah! Hip hip! Hurrah! Mr. Mayor, Gulliners, I am moved by your unselfish joy in my visit. As a matter of fact, I was somewhat different from the child I seemed to be in the mayor's speech. When I went to school, I was thrashed. And I stole the potatoes for Widow Ball, aided by ill. Not to save the old board from dying of hunger, but just for once, to sleep with ill in a more comfortable bed than Conrad's Village Wood or Peterson's Barn. Nonetheless, as my contribution to this joy of yours, I want to tell you 
that I am ready to give Gulen one billion. Five hundred million for the town, and five hundred million to be shared among each family. Uh, one billion? On one condition. <laughs> She demands that justice be done. In other words, she will give you all a billion if you right the wrong she has done in Gulen. Mr. Ill, if you please. What do you want of me? Step forward, Mr. Ill. Sure. In, the, in the year 1910, I was Lord Chief Justice in Gulen. I had a paternity case to arbitrate. Madame Zakanassian, then known as Clara Walsher, claims that you were the father. At the time, you denied paternity. You called forward two witnesses. Ah, it's an old story. I was young. Roby, Toby, Doby. Bring in Toby and Doby. <laughs> Well, Mr. Ill, do you recognise these two? We're Kobe and Loby. We're Kobe and Loby. I don't know them. We've changed a lot. We've changed a lot. Say your names. Jacob Chicken. Jacob Chicken. Louis Perch. Louis Perch. Well, Mr. Ill? I know nothing about them. Jacob Chicken and Louis Perch. Do you know Mr. Ill? We're blind. We're blind. Do you know him by his voice? By his voice? By his voice! In 1910, I was the judge, and you were the witnesses. You swore an oath before the court of Gullen. What did you swear? We'd slept with Clara. We'd slept with Clara. You swore on oath before me, <coughs> before the court, before God. Was it the truth? We swore a false oath. <coughs> Why, Jacob Chicken and Lewis Perch? He'll bribe us! He'll bribe us! With what did he bribe you? With a pint of brandy! With a pint of brandy! And now, tell them what I did with you, Kobe and Lobi. Tell them. The lady tracked us down. The lady tracked us down. Correct. Madam Zakanassian tracked you down to the ends of the earth. Jacob Chicken emigrated to Canada and Lewis Perch to Australia, but still she tracked you down. And then what did she do with you? She gave us to Toby and Roby. She gave us to Toby and Roby. And what did Toby <coughs> and Roby do to you? Castrated and blinded us. Castrated and blinded us. And there you have the whole story. One judge, <coughs> one accused, two false witnesses, a miscarriage of justice in the year 1910. Isn't that so, plaintiff? That is so. It's over and done with, dead and buried. It's an old crazy story. What happened to the child plaintiff? It lived one year. What happened to you? 
I became a prostitute. And what made you one? The judgment of that court made me one. And now you desire <coughs> justice, Madame Zakanassian. I can afford it. A billion for good. If someone kills, Alfred Hill. <gasps> children. That's a fact I want you to know. A good mother. Let her stay upstairs, rest, save her energy. In that case, we'll have breakfast together. It's a long time since we've done that. I suggest eggs and a tin of American hand. we we'll do ourselves proud. Like in the good old days, when the sunshine factory was still booming. You'll have to excuse me. Uh, aren't you going to eat with this car? I'm going to the station as a railway man opposite. They may want a temporary. Railroad work in the blazing sun is no job for my boy. It's better than no job at all. I'm going to work. You too? I see. No one asked my lady where? To the lyric so they may have a bed in. <laughs> <laughs> Good kids. Fine kids. Bernie, pass me my left leg. I can't find it, madam. On the chest of drawers, behind the wedding flowers. <laughs> Morning, love bear. There are cigarettes. Same as usual. Uh, not those, no. I want the green ones. Cost more? On account? Since it's you, Hofbauer, and we should all stick together. Morning. Light mist in the street. Silvery hair. 
Toby, the Armenian folk song. That is his favorite tune. He used to love listening to it every morning. An exemplary man, that old tycoon, with a veritable navy of oil tankers and racing stables and millions more in cash. It was worth a marriage, a great teacher, and a great dancer, a real devil. I copied him. Thoughts aren't your strong point. 
she's sitting up there with her husband now. on account from me too. Better cigarettes, better milk, cognac. Why are the shops all giving you credit? You're giving us credit too. How are you going to pay? How are you going to pay? How are you going to pay? How? How? Township's getting rowdy. Village life. Seems to be some trouble in the shop though. Haggling over the price of meat. You must abide by the law. Incitement to murder. Listen, Ariel, we don't have a case of incitement to murder. You took the lady's proposal seriously. So much is obvious. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. And we can't take the lady's proposal seriously. One billion is an exorbitant price. People offer a thousand, maybe two thousand for a job like that. Not a penny more. You can bet your life on it. Which again proves that uh, we can't take the lady's proposal seriously. Even if we did, we couldn't take the lady seriously because then she'd be mad, get it? Inspector, this proposal threatens me. Whether it happens to be the lady woman has to be mad or not, that's only logical. Illogical. You can't be threatened by a proposal, only by the execution of a proposal. Show me one genuine attempt to execute that proposal. For example, one man who's been pointing a gun at you, then I'll be on the spot with less. But no one wanted that. Has any wish to execute that proposal? I'm not quite so sure, Inspector. Not quite so sure. My customers are buying better milk, better bread, better cigarettes. But you ought to be overjoyed. Business is better. Bobby, buy up to conch shares. Helmsburg has been in buying cognac. A man who hasn't earned a cent in years and lives on poor relief soup. Well, I'm on top of that cognac this evening. Helmsburg is inviting me over. <laughs> Everybody's wearing new shoes. New yellow shoes. What have you got against new shoes? <laughs> you too. Look, yellow as well. And you're drinking pills and a beer. 
tastes good. He always used to drink local beer. Listen. What? Music. Merry Widow. The radio. Yeah. So I called the next door to keep his window shut. How did Hagholzer get a radio? And you, Inspector, how are you going to pay for your pills and beer and your new shoes? That's my business. Good on police station. Baby, telephone the Russians and tell them I accept their offer. Okay. We'll see to it. And how are my customers going to pay? Doesn't concern me. It concerns me because it's me they're going to pay with. Look, no one's threatening me. <laughs> <laughs> the town's getting into debt. The greater the debt, the higher the standard of living. The higher the standard of living, and the greater the need to kill me. Do you imagine anything? And all that woman has to do is sit on her balcony, drink coffee, smoke cigarettes, and wait. That's all. Just wait. You've had too much brandy. You're all just waiting. Now it's no use. Listen here. The police are here to enforce respect for law, to maintain order and protect the individual. If the faintest suspicion of a threat to you arises from whatsoever source, wheresoever it arises, the police will step in. If you're alive, then how do you explain that gold tooth in your mouth, Inspector? <laughs> what? A gleaming new gold tooth. It's crazy. <laughs> listen, I haven't got time to listen to your ravings, man. Three billionaires have lost their little laptop, the black paper, and I've got to hunt it down. It's me you're hunting down. Me! He's coming. My dress design is coming. My fifth husband, my best looking man. He still creates all my wedding gowns. Roby, a minuet. Mm. I thought your fifth husband was. Mm. was certain. My sixth. From the boss of Western Railways. My four, impoverished, <coughs> shares belong to me. I seduced him in Buckingham Palace. <coughs> so it was. You're right, Hobie. I forgot all about him and his castle in Yorkshire. Then this letter must be from my second. Met him in Cairo. We kissed beneath the swing. The most impressive evening. I want to talk to you, Mr. Mayor. Take a seat. As man to man, as your successor. By all means. Oh, no, no, Madam Zachary, Zach nothing. The pants has escaped. Uh, it's roaming around the cathedral. So it's best to be armed. <coughs> sure. I've called up all the men only weapons. We're not letting the children go to school. Somewhat drastic measures. It's big game hunting. World Bank President, madam. Just blown in from New York. I'm not at home. Let to fly away again. What's on your mind? Go on, feel free. I'll burn yourself. That's a fine brand you're smoking there. Uh, Pegasus, uh, Virginia. Pretty expensive. Uh, uh, well worth the money. Your worship used to smoke another brand. Say it as me. <coughs> Cheaper. Far too strong. New type? Uh, silk. Uh, and I suppose you bought a pair of shoes. I had a pair specially made in culture that. That's funny. How did you know? That's why I've come to see you. There was the matter with you. I'm pale. You're sick. I'm scared. Scared? Living standards are going up. That's real news to me. I, I, do, they were. I demand official protection. Where were poor? Your worship knows very well what poor. Don't you trust us? There's a billion on my head. That apply to the police. I've been to the police. My man may assure you. When the police inspector opened his mouth, I saw a gleaming new gold tooth. You're forgetting, you're in Gulen. A city of humanist traditions. Get her to spend a night here. Brahms composed a quartet here. 
We owe allegiance to our lofty heritage. The new typewriter, Mr. Mayor. A Remington. Uh, it's to go in the office. <laughs> We've hot to serve you on that attitude. Um, I didn't expect such a nihilistic attitude from you. After all, we live under the rule of law. Then arrest that woman. Peculiar. I think peculiar. The police inspector said that too. Heaven knows, you are in the matter so unreasonably. You didn't bribe two kids to commit perjury and then bring a young girl into the lower depths. Nonetheless, there were quite a few billions down in those lower depths, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Let me say a few frank words to you. I wish you would. As man to man, the way you want it, you have any moral right to demand to be the rest of that lady, and furthermore, there's no chance of you becoming mayor. I'm extremely sorry to have to tell you. Officially? It's a full party directive. I understand. The fact that we condemn the, propo the, the proposal does not mean that we condone the crime that led to that proposal. The post of mayor requires certain guarantees of good moral character, which you can no longer furnish. You must realise that. We should continue to show the same friendship and regard as ever. That goes without saying. The best thing to do is to cover. The best thing to do is to pass over this whole affair in silence. I will also request the local press to know any of us get into print. They've already begun adorning my coffee, Mr. Mayor. For me, silence is too dangerous. But my dear old, it makes you think that. You ought to be thankful for casting a cloak of forgetfulness over the whole nasty business. You've already condemned me to death. Mr. Hill. That plan proves it. It proves you, Pat. sense or trace of spiritual dedication of a great age. Come in, Nil. Come into the sacristy. It's dark in here. Dark, but cool. I don't mean to bother you, Father. The doors of the church are open to all. I oh, don't be surprised at this weapon. Mrs. Akinar says Black Panther is on the trial. It's just been up in the choir loft and that's in Peterson's barn. I need help. What kind of help? I'm scared. Scared of who? People. That the people will kill if you will. They're hunting me down as if I were a wild animal. Oh, you should fear not people but God. Not death in the body, but in the soul. The sexton caught me with my surplus. My life's at stake. Your eternal life. There's a rise in the standard of living. It's the spectre of your conscience rising. The people are happy. Young girls are decking themselves out. The boys have put on bright shirts. The town's getting ready to celebrate my murder and I'm dying of terror. A family life, that's all they're doing, just a family life. It's hell. Oh, you are your own hell. You are older than I am. You don't <coughs> know people. But in the end, one only knows oneself. I think that because she once betrayed a young girl many years ago for money, the tribes came over and betrayed you now for money. Oh, you impute your own nature onto others, all too naturally. The cause of our sin and our fear lies in our own hearts. Once you have acknowledged that, you will have conquered your torment and acquired a weapon whereby to master it. The Seamatops have acquired a washing machine. Won't let that trouble you. On credit. 
troubled by your soul's immortality. And the stock is the television set. Oh, pray to God. Sexton, my bands. Examine your conscience. Go the way of repentance. It's the only way, or the, for, the fires of the world will relight, relight your terror again and again. It is our only way. We, there is no other way out. I have to perform my office now. I have a baptism. Sexton, the Bible, the liturgy, the Book of Psalms. The little children are crying. Let them be left into the light, into the only ray of light that illumines the world. The second bell? Hear it, splendid tone, rich and powerful, just the fountain of life. You too, Father, you too! Free, we are all weak believers and unbelievers. Free, the golden bells are tolling, tolling for treachery. Flee, do not lead us into temptation with your presence. Flee, flee! Bowie, they're shooting. Yes, they are, madam. What at? The Black Panther, it's escaped. Did they hit him? He's dead, madam. He's lying on the doorstep of the hills. Shot. Poor little animal. Bowie, play a funeral march. <laughs> <laughs> 